uh, Christopher Yu, uh, Department Chair in Computer Science. Uh, I'm going to give a very brief presentation about our program, introducing our program, our curriculum, and also other activities we, we have here. So be, before we begin our session, then I'd like to introduce our faculty members first. So Dr. Shan Wang is an undergraduate advisor. Hi. And Mikhail Goffman is a graduate advisor. And uh, Dr. Bine is also the, the advisor for Sebastian Club and also the leader of the Assure Us. Good morning, everyone. And Dr. Kanika Sud. Uh, hi, everybody. Okay, so it's the study, study of computers and computations. And computer scientists uh, basically try to solve very mostly complex problems, so easy problems that anybody can solve. So in order to solve those problems, then uh, we need to have really proper background and skill. And that uh, is actually, uh, as a body of knowledge in computer science actually include uh, the theoretical foundation of computer science and basically to understand how computer works and also computing system method and developing algorithm, software application and hardware applications and so on. So once the graduate finished the, all those uh, uh, coursework, uh, learning all those, uh, all that body of knowledge then they can uh, start their career in almost every area of the industry, then government and, and, and education. So for the graduate, then in order to finish the degree, then what it requires to get the bachelor's degree in computer science? So it requires uh, 120 unit of coursework. And uh, the 120 unit uh, consists of the several the different um, the coursework in different categories, starting in the general education, 27 unit, and, and science electives, uh, 12 unit, and math, 18 unit and the remaining unit, 63, more than half of those 120 units uh, will be a computer science. And computer science course, computer science course can be also further divided by core and electives. And then these are the core and, and elective course. Core means uh, basically every student have to take those, all those course covered by those core course. And total number of units is 48 unit and electives is 15 unit. Elective basically means uh, the student have a choice to pick certain course or in certain area. Okay, so this core 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 uh, curriculum here then covers many different sub areas of computer science, so programming like computer programming and programming languages, computer organization and architectures, and algorithm database and, and operating system, and computer networks and security and artificial intelligence. So. To get a bachelor's degree, then uh, the every student have to finish all this 48 unit of core coursework. And uh, in addition to the core, then student will have a choice to pick 15 unit, basically means like five course, because every computer science course we offer is more three unit. And so the 15 unit means five course. So a student can choose based on their interest and uh, career goal, they can pick some course based on their uh, like. Uh, in the interest in certain area like machine learning, cybersecurity, software engineering, and game development, and web application, mobile application development, high performance computing, and computer science theories. Okay, then that uh, it's gonna be a lot of course because 120 unit, and even you focus on only computer science courses, 63 unit. That's a lot of course, so it's almost like six, uh, 16 then more than 20, close to even 30, yeah, I mean, yeah, 20 course. Okay, so uh, we, to help our students, because that's really intimidating coursework, especially for computer science. And so we create the sample or recommended uh, four-year degree plan. And then, so students admitted uh, to the department as a freshman, they can finish the degree in four years. If they take 10 course for each year, like first year they take 10 course, second year, 10 course, third year, 10 course, and fourth year, then we recommend them to take a little less course, eight course. And then uh, remaining time, they can focus on finding job, applying job, and working as an intern and so on. So mostly the senior can be a little bit uh, busier than just the junior and other uh, level of students. 
So it, it is reasonable to take a little less course than just other regular semesters. Then also the important thing to keep in mind that in this four-year degree plan, to finish this computer science, three consecutive computer science course, 120 first programming course, 121 second programming course, and 131 data structure can be also considered as third programming course. And finishing these three consecutive courses as soon as possible without uh, interruptions is very, very critical because until you finish these three courses, then, then students are not, will not be able to take any other upper division, even 300 level, 200 level course can take. So finishing those courses in our, our department or maybe even community college, if you don't offer all the enough section for students, then you can even take this course in community college, then make sure you finish this one three consecutive semesters. Then uh, you can take other courses like math course and general education and also science course right here. Okay, then, uh, so after you finish this degree in four years, then what can you do? Yeah, there are a lot of things you can do because almost every company organization need a computer scientist. So I only selected those top company everyone uh, is familiar with or know. And also with the parentheses here, then their primary business and also potential tasks you, you may probably have to do once you have, the, have a job at the, for the, at the company. So Google's search engine, of course, they are, that's their primary business and also Android app and, uh, and also Facebook and Twitter's um, social media company, then Apple's is iPhone and app is one of the large company too and Microsoft and then um, Amazon, they, uh, Microsoft, the Windows, everyone knows. Amazon's e-commerce, everyone knows. And also these two companies also is very strong in their business, especially uh, cloud computing. There are a lot of jobs related to this cloud computing. And uh, Tesla is, is the leader of this autonomous uh, vehicles, Tesla, then, and you can also find the job in the banking industries, probably working on the financial system or related projects. And defense company for defense projects and entrepreneurs. So it's another opportunities you can think about. So especially if you have great ideas, business ideas, and you like business, then the, I strongly recommend to think about this uh, this path to business. Because we have, uh, right, I think uh, Brian Roof, one of the uh, successful business uh, now, man, uh, he's a still student he, because he started his business when he was sophomores. And uh, he's, quite, he's been so successful. His business actually is running really well. And especially the, the, especially the area of this uh, police and also emergency system. And he's being particular with this virus, coronavirus. And he's, I think I heard uh, he's even now is busier with this, uh, his system. And also, yeah, then as you, I already mentioned, like almost every company organization will like hire computer scientists. And also then particularly Google, we have a special relationship with Google. Uh, we have a partnership with Google. And uh, Google engineer will actually come to our department and uh, that engineer will teach. And there's two section of uh, first programming course, 120. And in the past uh, several semester, then they used to teach 120. Then starting this semester, we're gonna have another Googler, Google engineer. So we're gonna have two Google engineers in our department and we'll teach uh, the first programming course and also second programming course with our faculty members. And in addition to teaching uh, those programming course and Google engineer actually do or, plan or host many other uh, events like uh, internships and also also then other student activities like club activities and also the writing resume or markup interview and many different things they usually do in our, the, the, in our regular, I mean our department. So whenever we have that event plan and set up then the department will make an announcement. So pay attention to those email and announcement then you can participate in that, those events. So we strongly recommend uh, our students to maximally utilize the Google engineers when they are here. Okay, then, so that's what we can do. There are, there are many other things, of course, you, I, don't, I don't expect everyone to will get a job at this company, but um, there are so many other companies I didn't even mention. Uh, 
So typically, the most of our students, when they get a job, they write program or they work as a software engineers or software developers or application developers and so on. Okay, so then, so then why we choose computer science at Cost of Fulton? There, I wrote down your several regions, and we have very uh, like the capable and distinguished faculty member with the, the various expertise in, in different areas, the cybersecurity algorithm, AI and machine learning, gaming, and also software engineering. And we also have uh, excellent facility with the modern computer labs and, and classrooms. And also we have very strong programs, especially helping our students, especially when they take a low division intro, uh, in, introduction introductory course like especially those three courses I already mentioned intro program course so we have a supplemental instructional program and a tutoring service and also we have this uh, diversity oriented program and Dr. Bine also lead this program and he Dr. Bine is also the advisor of the Wix okay so Dr. Bine can you briefly let's let's be a little bit brief can you briefly mention about this program your microphone is mute, unmute. Okay. Sorry. So the SI program it's for the introductory courses and it's offered for free to all the students. Typically sessions are before or after the class. And we have senior graduating students or graduate students in which they lead a discussion reviewing the material from the coursework, not reviewing the assignments or the, pro uh, or the project, but doing similar examples to what's being done in class. The uh, WIXA program, it's a program developed by the Dean's Office for fresh uh, uh, first year or transfer, um, or transfer students, female students only. You'll be receiving an email from the Dean Office to become part of it. It offers um, seminars or webinars every two weeks and they offer also priority enrollment for the first year. The Ashoras program, it's um, an, an NSF grant, 1.5 million over five years. Now we have three years left in which it offers scholarships and prizes and there are activities scheduled once a month. And in summer, they offer, um, we offer uh, five to six weeks of paid internship to do research in campus. Thank you. Thank you. Um... And also university provide a laptop, especially for those who don't have no computer at home, then students can borrow laptop entire semesters and use the computers to finish their uh, coursework. And the university also have this uh, disability student service and also career service. And also we have strong industrial partnerships uh, and the, those company actually uh, will bring the project to the department and students can work on those projects. So Dr. Goffman, can you briefly mention about this industrial partnerships? Uh, sure. So in the past, uh, we have worked with Boeing. Uh, Boeing is a uh, company which has many different types of systems, including some old legacy systems as well as cutting edge systems. And in a group of students, uh, we worked on developing a procedure for the entire Boeing enterprise, which they can use to test the security of uh, their controls. Um, we also worked uh, with Unisys. Uh, Unisys is a company with whom we had a long time partnership. For three years, we worked on a project where we developed an environment for them, which they can use uh, and take advantage of all the modern tools in order to code in legacy languages. Um, now we're seeing the importance of that even more because you might have read in the news that uh, things like stimulus checks are being delayed or can't be deposited because a lot of the systems uh, used in finance and banking, they're powered by some ancient languages. So Unisys works in that field and we develop an environment for them where they can use modern tools to uh, to work in those older languages. Also, uh, we worked with a company uh, known as Kind Health, located in, in Texas. They're a health insurance company, and we conducted what's called a penetration test. A penetration test is basically where we hack the systems of the company in the same way that real-world hackers would, but our intention is different. 
uh, we do it to discover security vulnerabilities and to help them fix them. And in the fall, uh, we have another project that is IT related uh, coming up with a company known as Chem. Uh, it was supposed to happen this spring, but it's being delayed because of COVID-19. Uh, so also in addition to that, we have multiple research projects going on uh, related to cybersecurity, biometrics, uh, formal analysis. Uh, we can talk more about that if uh, anybody has specific questions. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. And uh, so uh, the many of our students also participate in research with our faculty for their research projects. Can uh, Dr. Wang, can you uh, briefly mention about it, like the right. opportunity yeah, for sure. research? Sure, yeah. So I think it's really important that you know, when you come to here, it's different from high school. You should be proactive. High school, you may be waiting for something to come to you. However, in university, you do have to take the initiative. Mean that try to find out what you want to do and look for help or resources that can support that, okay? So if you look up our website, I think if you come here, the first thing you want to know is look up our website to find all the faculty members who are working in areas and also our curriculum. That's number one important. So make sure how can you finish the program in a very good, you know, get all the opportunity you have and support you have. So faculty members have been working with a student for research and look up their website for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Dr. Su, do you, can you mention briefly about your research? Because you will need a lot of students uh, help and support. Uh, right, so uh, for my past research, I've been working or I'd be specifically uh, looking into sparse linear systems for providing uh, solver selection techniques for, for such linear systems and uh, I'll be continuing with that work. So that's one project. Then uh, I'm also looking into, uh, you know, new projects where I'm applying machine learning in multiple domains. Um, and uh, the other thing that I'm also very interested and passionate about is, uh, you know, looking into the STEM area, specifically uh, how female en enrollment in the computer science department uh, across the nation is, is uh, particularly low. So, uh, you know, researching about that is, is yet another area I'm interested in. And so if you do end up uh, in Cal State Fullerton and you're interested in doing research in these areas, then uh, I would love to uh, get an email or hear from you uh, at, at some point. Thank okay, you. Thank you. And we also help our students to uh, continue their graduate program. So if any of you are interested in uh, pursuing a PhD, then you can definitely work with our faculty and your faculty or professor will help you if you're applying for the PhD and even, to, even so you finish your degree in, in PhD in computer science. And we provide graduate advising. Um, right now, I'm the graduate advisor. So if you're interested in uh, continuing to grad school, uh, please feel free to consult me as well. Uh, we did have students who went on to pursue their PhD. Um, I personally have uh, two right now who are nearing their completion. So, All right. so yeah, our graduate uh, actually went to many uh, really different uh, prestigious uh, graduate schools. Yeah, can I add something on that? Actually, I have uh, you know three students who graduate you know with a PhD now become professors. Three, you know, students from they they got program you know master degree from one class now then proceed to a PhD degree and now they are faculty mm -hmm. members somewhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. And also we have uh, many active and specialized student clubs. So uh, we have to with a variety of outreach activities. So who so we have, main, uh, we have several other student club, uh, ACM, CMW, then cybersecurity and video game uh, development. So anyone can uh, chip in and talk about uh, the clubs. So any club advisor here? Right yeah. here. So, uh, uh, yeah, do we not? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So I, I, alphabetically, I'm not the advisor of ACM. I'm the advisor of ACMW only. And also I'm a supervisor of the Title Rover, which is an interdisciplinary club. So ACM does um, programming and does workshops and does uh, mock interviews, especially in the fall semester supported by the uh, Google um, 
uh, our Googler. So the Googler comes to campus not only to teach, but also to support the student in applying for jobs and internship, especially with Google. Mm. The ACMW does um, outreach events for the Girl Scouts or uh, to increase the percentage of female students in computer science. And we have a STEM Expo scheduled for October. Hopefully it will happen. In which we have about 500 Girl Scouts and we rely on the clubs in campus to help us. So I'm done. Uh, we can, may want to talk about uh, OSS. Yeah, service uh, yes. Uh, sure. So I'm um, again, I'm Mikel and I'm the advisor for OSS or the offensive, um, offensive security uh, club. So uh, we are a collection of students uh, and our membership keeps growing. Uh, we're interested in uh, all security. Uh, one of our special interests include penetration testing. So penetration testing, I might have mentioned before, uh, we uh, hack systems. We do, you know, we use real world tools and techniques that hackers use for the purpose of testing the security of uh, systems. Uh, we have all competed in multiple competitions, uh, both regional and national. Um, in 2018, we won a second place uh, nationally. Uh, we have previously won both first and second place in regional competitions. Uh, we have also uh, recently uh, won a first place in a bug bounty competition. A bug bounty is where companies give money uh, to people who find security vulnerabilities in their software. So our students were part of a team called uh, Straight Out of LA that has um, won the first place. Uh, in the national competitions, uh, we have previously overcome uh, big schools like uh, Rochester, uh, UCs, etc. So uh, we hold weekly workshops, uh, which actually teach you all the different uh, cybersecurity techniques. So if you uh, want to be a real hacker and a real ethical hacker, uh, please feel free to let us know and we'll be happy to have you join. Good. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> and also we have uh, also another club, uh, video game club. Now we don't have any advisor showing up today, but then we have Dr. Paul Inventato is, is advisor of this club. And they are very, very active too. So I think they meet almost every week and, and share their idea or information about their video game they, they develop. So they also can okay, have a uh, workshop and inviting uh, many people in local, especially in Southern California. Then. So if you're interested in the video game club, then yeah, this is the club you can join. Okay, so I think that that's it uh, for my presentation. Then uh, from this point on, then we can move on to the question and answer question. If you have any question, then you can ask you know, your question through the chat. And we'll, I will try my best to answer every question you have. Yeah. Okay, so let me then look at the chat box here, the questions. Question please, okay, then I'll uh, please pick. So will the PowerPoint be emailed to us afterward? If I'm interested in both security and software engineering, how should I take? So the email, uh, yeah, I can definitely. So if you are, uh, in, uh, if you want to see my PowerPoint slide, uh, read my PowerPoint slide, just send me an email. I my email address is the person the department website. So look for Christopher, you the department chairs. So I will definitely forward the, the slide to you then. then and I have uh, a private. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Oh, I have a private question uh, which was posted to me. But go ahead and finish, Christopher. Okay. Now, so I'm interested in both cybersecurity and, and software engineering. How should I take course? So yeah, then don't worry. Basically, uh, we have uh, plenty of cybersecurity and plenty of software engineering course. You can just mix and match. So basically, you can take uh, some cybersecurity course, some software engineering course. And also, starting uh, in the first semester, we're going to have cybersecurity concentration. So Dr. Goffman, can you, like, let's be brief because we don't have much time. So. Uh, Briefly talk about cybersecurity concentrations. Uh, sure. So basically, uh, we have a new uh, cybersecurity concentration. 
which is a uh, concentration designed for those who are interested in all things cybersecurity. Uh, in brief, uh, as your so you register for the computer science program, but uh, but then as your cybersecurity as your electives, you would take a network security course and then choose uh, three cybersecurity electives. Uh, this concentration has been designed under the guidance of rules proposed by the Department of Homeland Security and the National Security Agency. We're in the process of uh, getting official recognition as the center of access by them, which is one of the prestigious titles awarded by that. So um, now, uh, Christopher, can I also answer another question? Which yeah, was sure, go ahead. Privately, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so somebody asked, um, I'm prospective transfer here. You mentioned that uh, you are the grad advisor. I uh, was wondering if you could speak on what uh, we have to do in order to get into the MS program at one of the UCs if getting our undergrad at Fullerton. Uh, basically, uh, to answer your question, RK, uh, uh, basically, you know, do well in your courses here, um, especially in courses related to your interests. So one of the things which you want to identify early on is uh, what is it your passion in computer science? For example, are you interested in software engineering? Are you interested in machine learning? Are you interested in cybersecurity? And um, as you are taking courses, you know, take courses that are related to that, uh, definitely get involved with faculty research. Um, you know, the kind of research which can get you published. And a lot of our faculty are working on research that gets published at conferences and journals. So when you apply uh, to a master's program at UC, they'll see that you already have publications in that area, which will make you a more attractive candidate. Um, as you are seeking uh, to apply to UC, you wanna look at their webpage, uh, see what professors are working in the area in which you're interested, and you want to contact them personally through email saying, mm -hmm. I'm so-and-so, um, you know, send them your resume, hopefully with some, you know, publications on it and coursework related to what you're interested in and, um, you know, explain why you're interested and, uh, you know, go from there. So in other words, you know, like Dr. Wang said before, be proactive about what you do. Um, you know, do well in your courses, get involved in research um, and contact the right people and uh, you should be great. I okay. hope your question. Thank you. And I have another question here then. Uh, okay, so then what computer spec uh, should I look for? I think I already, I think mentioned in the first session. So basically, it looks like this is a very common asked question. Uh, maybe you can just post the answer for this question. Basically, the there are a lot of computer you can buy, of course, but then the, I would recommend to buy relatively good computer, not just too low end computers. So pay, paying attention to the RAM size or memor main memory RAM and the uh, CPU speed. Okay, and also then a little bit here, then show here, then show the graduation path. So uh, some of you asked me a question about the, the, the pathway for the transfer to students. Yes, I do also have a pathway for the st transfer students, especially, uh, if you already finish your the law division course, most of the law division course, then the pathway is pretty much similar. Basically, looking at this four-year degree plan, starting a second, a third years, except a couple of uh, GE general education and also maybe some computer science course. So it's not that different. So, but then uh, one thing that is important is that all those courses you, you have taken community uh, can be very likely to be transferred. So you don't have to worry about it. And uh, will I have be able to access to this slide? Yes, so if you want, then send me an email. Or I, I don't know, so yeah. Can, I, can yes. I add something on that? Yes. Uh, yeah, so basically if you're a transfer student, I think the number one important issue is for you to again, look up our curriculum, okay? And if lo you look at the course in there, and you know, you feel familiar with it. Say, oh wow, I probably have taken some course in here. Let us know. We will transfer as many units as possible, okay? Because we need to look at the knowledge that you have covered because uh, the knowledge is going to be used in up-level you know, classes. You don't have the knowledge, then you may have difficulty in the future studies, okay? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And, so and there is a question for me um, privately. So, 
Uh, Nafis uh, Chowdhury, I apologize if I butcher your name, uh, has a question. Is there any specific requirement to join OSS or any CS uh, uh, student club? Also, is this club only focused on hacking or both hacking as well as security? So um, I will answer uh, the one for OSS. So basically there are no requirements. You know, you just have to be passionate about uh, security and yes we focus on both uh what's called offensive security which is where you uh do hacking that's where you attack systems in order to test their security but we also focus on defensive security which is how do you uh protect the system against other people's attacks uh sometimes offensive is also referred to as red teaming and defensive is referred to as blue teaming so to answer your question we do both and uh, other clubs, they don't really have any other prerequisites, um, unless, you know, other advisors like Duina want to chime in. I don't think there are any prerequisites for ACMW, right? You don't have to be female. Mm -hmm. No, no, for ACMW, in fact, um, uh, half of our board is male and half it's female. We don't have any gender. We are looking for students willing to put on time to teach other students computer science. And that's all. So we do not charge, it's free. In fact, if you are a club member, you may be able to uh, participate at national conferences. Um, we have the, um, in, uh, the student board ASI, which sponsors travel to conferences. So as a club member, you will be eligible to, to apply and get mm -hmm. funding to partially, at least, uh, at least $500 to go to travel to conferences and to network. Thank you, Mikhail. Okay, so I have uh, many other questions uh, here. Uh, one student asking, allow whether student can enroll in the master degree program directly after they've done with the bachelor's degree. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's not only about allow, but you, you have to apply. Yeah. And it's, it's a pathway to master degree program can be easier than if you apply. Yeah, and Christopher, uh, could you please answer this question? I have uh, a question from Ashley Waltz. How do you think we should study for Alex test? No, I'm, I have a question too. Okay, let me, yeah, because, okay. yeah, yeah, let me look at the other question then, okay. because we don't have much time left. So I saw multiple research projects available during summer, then the project wage program, then other stuff, then the students are not a part of the wage program, will they be able to participate in those research projects uh, at the, so uh, anybody uh, familiar with the wage project i think it's a wage project is actually what uh, yeah so uh, Chris, by, uh, i can sense. answer this yeah Chris, go ahead. I can, so the race program it's a project in which involves students from the community colleges so if you are a student community college which you are planning to transfer to cal state fullerton you are involved in this program and i believe it's paid internship for the summer uh, the, uh, can can other students participate in this research right. project? I do not know. It has to do with the um, uh, individual faculty decision. Right, yeah. no, and, I think, now I got it. So can I take over then? Yeah. Answer? Okay, thank you. So now I remember, thank you for reminding me for that uh, program. So in order to uh, participate in that program, you have to be, there are several requirements. Basically, you got to be currently the the student in community colleges and you have to apply then you have to get approval so yeah the answer is no no really so only only for those students have to meet all those criteria. okay then uh, transfer students get involved in the research project yeah of course the uh, transfer students are regular comparison student too so you're not uh, different so you can definitely contact uh, advisors or uh, faculty member then and participate in the research project they have Okay, and then also I saw multiple research, okay, same thing, I think. Is there any special requirement to join offensive? Yeah, I think the Dr. Goffman already answered that question, right? And how do you think about, think we should study for the Alex study? And, and so I think the Alex is for math, uh, this is math related course, right? So you, I, I, I'm not really sure 100%, but then uh, you probably just study math, so calculus one and two, or, or other the required math, then uh, take the exam. And anybody familiar with the Alex? Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I remember that this is a test which is done here in campus, and it's John Fowler from Computer Engineering who is uh, managing 
or used to manage this uh, project and um, uh, it's free I believe it's offered for free and uh, it, if you pass that test then you do not have to take I believe 150A and 150B okay great but it yeah. will be John Fowler in computer engineering right, so basically yeah I think it's, it is more like an online uh, based exam or test so you probably want to study this the calculus, then just try to take the exam and then there's. And what language do we learn and over the course uh, over the course of uh, this undergraduate program? So, so we require students to uh, learn a C plus plus, especially on those uh, three consecutive course. So three programming course, we use C plus plus as a primary language or required languages. And after you finish those languages and those course. That language and course, and then you have a choice to pick other languages, especially when you take 200 level, 300 level, or other upper division okay. course. So you can you can pick any of the languages we offer. Can I add one more comment on that? Yes. Yeah. So uh, actually, this is part of the uh, ACM and IEEE curriculum requirement. Basically, for computer science major, you know, if you finish finish a degree in computer science, you are required to have multiple languages. Okay. You. You should not uh, be just have one language because language is not the big issue. How do you solve problem is what's important in computer science. So if you know how to solve a problem, then every language will probably provide you with the same, you know, uh, yeah. you know okay, job thank to everything you. to solve. Right. Yeah, thank you. And also, do you offer many internship opportunity? Well, the department doesn't offer internship opportunity at all of course uh, the industries the company or other organization they offer internship so students have to find the internship offer then then uh, most of the internship offer are actually paid internships so you have to make sure then you find the offer then there's a application process so you can apply for internship then once your application is processed then you can actually take the work as an intern and also you can get credit so we will, department will give you elective credit. So three unit elective credits. Okay, then I would like to access PowerPoint. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I will keep that in mind that I will send you my PowerPoint slide. And also transfer students who have no experience by community college GPA. Would I be able to candidate? Yeah, so you can actually uh, participate in the, the research project with the faculty. Um, so it's basically as long as you have some uh, at least decent background or after you learn some necessary background related to the project can i add again a comment on that yes thank you yeah so there is a large course called independent studies and it's it's i will encourage every one of you uh, try to try that one so basically you can do research with work out the member and it will be count for three units for elective courses. Mm. So it's a very good opportunity for you to participate in right. research. And also the most faculty really want students with the really strong programming background. So as long as you are very strong in programming, I don't think you need to worry about like, uh, about the background itself. Because the most uh, important background that our faculty look for is basically programming skills. So if you are a strong programmer, yeah, then you, you will find a lot of opportunities. And is the RAGE research program still taking place? This summer, unfortunately, they're canceled. So then hopefully next year's. So is the one question I ask here is, is the RAGE research program still available this summer? Then I heard that that's not available. They canceled the program this summer. And how do I know who is my advisor? Okay, so that's a good question. <laughs> okay. So when you, uh, if you, if you, when you are the minister department, and uh, you, there are, we only have uh, the several advisors. Basically, when you are in freshman sophomore, then there is no designated advisor for each student. But we have a group of advisors you can contact. So when you are, if you are a freshman sophomore, you can contact those advisor or or the staff member in the second floor. We have a student success center. We have many of them, then they, were, they are ready to help you and then provide all the necessary advice related to your coursework and internship and many other things. Then once you move on to junior level, then, uh, then we have a faculty advisor uh, give you academic advising and career advising. So we have a four faculty members, advisors, faculty members, 
including myself, and also Dr. Chen, Dr. Choi, then also the I, one more person I can somehow remember, Dr. Floyd Holiday. Flo yeah, Floyd Holiday. Dr. Holiday. Then Dr. Wang can be your advisor to his undergrad advisors. And if you have any question about the graduate uh, program, then Dr. Mick uh, Goffman is advisors. Okay, so then basically contact the department. You come to the department website, then you'll find the advisor information, then you individually contact them. So yeah, you I think you, a, you can just send email. Email is a very important tool, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you have any question, you, you, you find out, you know, you need to send email to the department office or to a specific, you know, faculty mm -hmm. member and we will be here to help you. Yeah, okay. especially now that we are all telecommuting. Uh, so if you contact the department by calling, there's no one there. Okay, so make sure uh, visit our uh, department website and look for the information they are posted on the, on the website. And if you need to have some uh, individual advising session, yeah, contact the advisors in, in a specific program. So if you have any question related to undergraduate program, then we have a four undergrad advisor listed there you can just contact individually and make an appointment for graduate I just program, posted the link yeah, yeah graduate yeah, advisor information also posted on the website too yeah. so then the, what do you especially look for when selecting student conducting research yeah I already answered the question then strong programming background that's the most important uh, skill that our faculty really uh, look for and uh, what is the best thing for us to incoming students to do prepare for colleges in this I mean, in the prepared calculus okay so this looks like a general question so so uh, actually being uh, uh, disciplined and being independent and it's really important yourself because nobody will tell you what to do when you become a college student you have to take care of yourself most uh, most of time but when in doubt, like when you have any question, then it's very important to contact or approach faculty member or contact the department and, and ask for help. And then don't wait, uh, they will or expect, uh, they will come to you. So as Dr. Wang already mentioned, you gotta be proactive whenever you have a question and when you're in trouble, you, ask, you need to ask, ask for help. So the department is always ready for helping you and whatever actually, like a uh, resource and, and tool we have and within our capacity. Can I add one comment on that? Yes. Yeah, so basically this is what, again, I, I will encourage you, do the search, okay? So for computer science student, number one, you should be able to search. So if you have any questions you want to answer, you, you want answers, go to our university website, type in the search, and you probably will find a lot of resource already there answering the question for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I add also two things here? Yes, go ahead. Yes. So number one is that um, uh, the, uh, as you progress your degree, the uh, code lead and hackerang are a typical website in which the students uh, get programming questions and they have to develop a solution within a, uh, uh, a limited timeline. The ACM also club provides um, training sessions because we participate in fall at ICPC competition. And we are looking at students who have taken programming courses before in order to, uh, to participate because you can participate three times, which means in three years. So we no, do not look necessarily at the students graduating. Um, other, uh, if you are interested for a career, like to have programming as a career, the career services also provide mock interviews and uh, training. And um, they also have an uh, internship or for a day or something in spring. I don't know whether it still holds this uh, spring or not, in which if you sign up, you can, be, uh, you can have like a mock internship at a local company. And Garmin, which is in Brea, used to be a very popular company for okay. our students. Uh, yeah, then, yeah, we have only five, seven minutes left. Okay, so let's, uh, I have a couple of other questions here, so we're waiting. And uh, I think you're talking about near graduation seniors. Okay, so then uh, strong programming background. What do you mean by that? And whether it's the, what do you mean by GPA? No, I didn't mean by GPA. Of, of course, the strong background, programming background has strong correlation with your GPA, particularly in our department, but uh, that doesn't know what I, that, that's not what I meant. Actually, actual programming skills. 
like uh, if programming skills is reflecting your GPA, that's great. But the faculty member, even the company, when you offer, look for an internship position, then what they look for basically is your programming skill and computer science uh, knowledge. And uh, a lot of computer science knowledge are mostly influenced by the, your programming skills, really. So the being able to write the programs or solving problem, of course, writing program using the language of your choice, whether C++ or Python, C Sharp, or any other language you pick. Yeah. So if you are able to write application, yeah, that's uh, demonstrate your programming skills. Yeah, like I just wanted to add to that. Um, and, and this uh, also to emphasize what Sean said before, uh, to, to be a strong programmer, it means to be a good problem solver. Right. You know, yeah. can, can you solve a problem using code? And uh, writing the code part is usually the easy part. The hard part is actually to think of the problem and uh, think of how computer would do it mm -hmm. and translate that solution into the code. If you're able to do that and if you're good at that, that's what we mean by being good at programming. That's really, yeah, that's very important. Uh, yeah, so problem solving is really the critical. So I already mentioned the first, in my presentations, basically we solve problem, basically using computer or writing program. Okay, so is writing in C an option? Yes, you, uh, although C is an old language, but still uh, many places that you see. And if you're familiar with C, then you can quickly or easily learn C++ too. So the difference between the C and C++ is C++ is object-oriented language, C is procedural languages. But uh, when you take one uh, low division programming course, you will have to use C++, not C. Okay, any other questions? So it looks like uh, we, we answer all the questions then. Um, let me check back here then. Uh, could the uh, unit take, uh, could the unit, I have uh, one more question here. Could the unit we take transfer over to another engineering major so you decide to switch? That depends on their curriculum requirements. So if you separate, suppose you decide to switch to mechanical engineering uh, majors, and if mechanical major requires some computer science course, yes, you can. If the, the, the course is particularly the one they require, yes. Otherwise, you may not uh, be able to, even if you transfer it, but then that uh, credit, you, you may not be able to use it for their, their other majors. I believe that some of our courses, um, for, for example, operating systems, uh, it's also required of computer engineering students. Right. And, uh, computer engineering require a lot of computer science course. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah. And I believe that um, you can take some of the CS courses as electives for engineering. I've had uh, some students in my classes from engineering who were taking CS classes as electives. Okay, so I have one question. Like we don't have much time. So try first then we'll be able to register for class uh, when? Yeah, so university will actually make an announcement. I, we don't know the schedule yet. So you're very likely to receive email from university. Then once the registration window is open, then it's so important to register the class as soon as possible. I mean, the same time, if possible, and same day at least. Because the, the taking registering course in our department, because of so many students we have here, is so uh, challenging and competitive. Uh, we, we really feel sorry about it, but then because of the limited budget, that's the situation we have right here. And uh, I'm interested in becoming software engineer in the class. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming software engineer, then uh, there are a lot of courses we offer. You can just, uh, after you admit it here, then you can find the many courses related to software engineering. And also, what are the requirements? Oh, we're getting more and more questions now. <laughs> we are near the end, to the end. What are the requirements to join typical programming class? There is no requirement, I think, except uh, college math. Math, we call it math 125 is the only requirement for a first programming course. And uh, also then is there any pipeline for, okay, so then mention earlier, what uh, do we prepare to get? Yeah, uh, first uh, uh, Christopher, you may want to mention about the computer placement uh, test, which is done twice a year. Right, yeah. So if you already have, if you think you have already have a background and you don't really want to waste your time taking the, the course that you're gonna learn the same thing, then, yeah, I recommend you to take the placement exam. Then you can skip the uh, course. Then you take other course, so like uh, the elective course. So 
So that's another option to save your time and learn something more. And especially what do you work on personally? So what do we prepare to get our first internship? Yeah, so getting first internship is also, uh, especially if you're a freshman or sophomore, it can be a little bit more challenging because, uh, but uh, it's not impossible, of course. So because there are a lot of different type of works you can do. So the, I recommend to look for that particular type of internship of, of uh, position itself. Then uh, those positions mostly this will specify the skill they expect. Then you prepare for that skill, then learning if necessary, then apply for it. So yeah, again, the, the, the programming skill is most common and important skill they usually re uh, require. Okay, then anything else? So here's the pipeline program, which allows them to enroll in master's degree program directly after they are done with the bachelor's degree. So we don't have a really specific uh, program like that kind of pipeline. This, but it's applying, moving on to next uh, master's degree program after the you finish bachelor's degree. It's not really that difficult. It's very easy. Just need to apply. So would the portfolio be needed to demonstrate programming skills? Yes, yeah, that's that's a great idea. So if you want to demonstrate your programming skill, yes, portfolio, including the application you actually develop or created, program you have written, that will be uh, very important uh, evidence, or convincing evidence to those people and company too. I just wanted to add to that, a great way to showcase your programming portfolio is to post your code on GitHub. Uh, because oftentimes when companies interview students and they want to see what you've done, they'll actually check out your GitHub. I had right. quite a few students who have been helped this way. 